it's incredible how many amazing horror games we added during the last year. So, like, this is a, such a golden era for every fan of horror games. And, uh, like, uh, I cannot even say how many good entries we had during the last year. So we had the comeback of uh, big brands like Dead Space. And in the close future, we already know that Silent Hill is going to be back. But also, like, a remake of big classics like Dead Space, uh, Resident Evil 2, 3, and 4, as uh, new entries uh, with uh, a huge... Uh, um, amazing quality like uh, uh, Resident Evil Village and Alan Wake 2. Seeing Alone in the Dark, another big classic uh, coming back with a remake actually made a lot of fans of the horror games basically being uh, uh, hyped to know more and more and more and to play this game as well. And I'm really happy to say that uh, I personally enjoyed the experience. Like, I think that uh, actually we are uh, still having a really good moment as a horror fans. And uh, this game is go- is actually another good entry in uh, the horror games uh, uh, library of uh, these uh, latest years. What's Alone in the Dark? Like the new Alone in the Dark is basically a narrative experience, a narrative experience, a psychological horror uh, with some Lovecraft elements, like the original one, and um, it does some action sequence that kind of remind a bit uh, like the fight scenes of games like uh, Alan Wake and. Uh, the recent Resident Evil uh, remakes, even if uh, I have to be honest, like uh, the game reminded me a lot more of the recent Alan Wake than uh, than uh, um, the Resident Evil remakes. It's uh, a sort of coincidence, I think, because like uh, considering the development times, like uh, it's impossible that actually. <laughs> Alan Wake um, could be considered as an influence on the development of this uh, Alone in the Dark. But uh, at the same time, like, uh, I, I'm really happy of this because like, as a fan of Alan Wake, like having a game that is uh, really close uh, in the philo- philosophy and uh, in the way how the horror is narrated, uh, like actually made me really enjoy this Alone in the Dark. The focus of the developers uh, was mainly on the narrative side of the game and uh, you can immediately see this in the choice of uh, the main characters of uh, uh, Alone in the Dark. Like the detective Edward Cornby is played by David Harbour was uh, uh, an important actor, like an amazing actor, but uh, really known by the uh, Jeek community thanks to his work on uh, Stranger Things, of course, one of the most important TV shows of the latest years, uh, the Marvel Cinematic Universe, uh, and um, the recent Hillboy remake. Like, uh, it basically worked on a lot of projects that uh, this kind of audience actually uh, know really well. And uh, I'm pretty sure that you're going to be happy to see David Arbor back and uh, being a star in this game. Uh, also because he actually did a really good job in this. The co-star, but, well, speaking of co-star, it's kind of wrong because, like, it's up to you to choose who's going to be the main protagonist of your playthrough, but, uh, like, uh, if you really want to play the game, you have to play both uh, the main characters. Uh, Emily Artwood is played by Jodie Colmer, who, I have to be honest, like, her performance in this game is impressive. Like, uh, I prefer playing as uh, Emily Artwood uh, for a ton of reason, but uh, like uh, the um, way I would Jody play there, even if uh, I repeat, Harbour did an amazing job, like uh, Jody Colmer is so good and so uh, expressive that uh, actually she made me involved more and more and more in the story. It's also true that she's kind of helped in this by the uh, base uh, synopsis as well. Like, uh, uh, this, the beginning of the story is kind of the same. 
like uh, Emily Hartwood uh, uh, contacts this detective uh, Edward Carby to go look for her uncle Jeremy Hartwood in the mansion of Del Seto, uh, because uh, he um, disappeared all of a sudden after that he sent um, a mail, a message to her where actually he describes a problematic situation. What uh, at the beginning uh, looks like uh, something uh, that uh, is probably invented by Jeremy itself, like it looks like uh, maybe hiding something more, and like you're going to discover more and more behind this mystery the uh, more you play the game, of course. So at the beginning of the game, like you are, you are going to choose uh, who you want to play. And um, even if, uh, I repeat, like uh, um, Edward Carnby, like is uh, really well played by David Arbor, like uh, there are moments that are really powerful in the uh, Carnby story as well. Like uh, I felt more involved with, uh, at playing this as Emily, considering that uh, she's directly connected to Jeremy Hartwood. Like uh, Jodie Colmer is really good at uh, making uh, uh, the feelings of this woman for her uncle actually. Uh, uh, really credible and like uh, because of this because it's not just a job like it can be for the the, the detective but uh, it's actually someone worried for uh, an uncle like uh, I felt more involved in the story of Emily this doesn't mean that uh, like you don't have to play the other story Um, for more reason first of all like uh, even if uh, uh, the core of the game is kind of the same at the point that you are going to have the same spawn of the enemies, the same enigmas, the same puzzle uh, as both characters. Even if, uh, uh, like, uh, mm, almost the whole game, there are um, moments in the close to the ending where actually you are going to leave uh, some unique situations for one or the other character, like... Um, the game, uh, uh, by having its focus on the narrative, like uh, actually pushes you at the playing also the story of the character that you didn't choose for the f- first playthrough. First of all, because like even if the game situations are the same, like the interactions between the main character and the other character is completely different. And in this way, you can discover not only more about the other characters in the story that are going to have a a total different meaning uh, uh, based on who you chose to play the campaign with. But also about the same main character as well. Also, there are some secrets and some uh, alternative endings that can be unlocked only if you play as both characters. Um, Basically, you unlock the alternative endings uh, and uh, some other uh, game scenarios uh, like only by completing completing a series of the collectibles and um, like uh, some of these can be completed only by finding these in the uh, playthrough of the other characters so some collectibles are available only in the Emily story and other ones only in the Carnby story and by combining these like you are basically able to unlock the alternative objectives this is a really important, uh, like this is uh, um, actually something that makes me look at the situation that I described before, so that basically the core of the game is almost the same for the two characters in a different way, because considering that the focus is on the narrative, like uh, making the players actually feel more and more familiar in a way that they can basically play the same game, but uh, like discovering the new elements and like stressing the importance of the new elements uh, by not uh, having to play a really long campaign uh, again and again uh, with uh, their differences. So, uh, for example, if there was a particular hard uh, uh, puzzle, like you're not going to remember how to do it and stuff like that. Like, I think it uh, was a a smart choice in this sense. So even if you don't have a situation like uh, the difference in the campaign of uh, Claire and Leon in Resident Evil 2, like uh, it's still going to be worth it to play the game as both sides and then to replay both campaigns to s- discover the other elements of the story. Because like the story is uh, the real uh, uh, core of this production. You're going to have uh, some fights that you're going for. for like um, you can choose the difficulty of both the puzzles and the fights. Um, in my opinion, like for the puzzles, like I feel like I 
could uh, reach the solution even without uh, the extra helps that you can activate because I kind of already had that idea by just looking at uh, what was going on. <clears throat> but at the same time, like uh, the extra help makes the experience sometimes smoother. So if you are players who want to just enjoy the story and don't want to get stuck too much on a puzzle, like you can activate these helps also every time you want in the story. So if you choose to not having any helps on the side, like you can choose to activate maybe only um, the pointing out of what you are looking for in the uh, documents that you're going to find around the house and if you realize that the fights that you're having uh, with the monsters and the enemies of the game are too hard like you can lower the difficulty in that sense as well i really enjoy this kind of uh, freedom uh, for the player also because i repeat like the developers worked a lot on the story and like uh, um, at the end like the main thing that you have to look for like if the experience uh, Gameplay wise, it's going to be too frustrating, like uh, um, having access to the um, next level and to discover more of the story. Like, is the most important thing. I have to say that, uh, like, uh, this game was a big surprise. Like, I really hope that uh, it's going to perform well because, like, uh, if this is the quality of the first episode of the return of uh, Alone in the Dark, like, uh, I want to see more of this. Like, I really enjoyed the psychological uh, thriller horror story that they uh, narrated here. And uh, also, the performance of the main characters was impressive. The difficulty wasn't too high, but I have to say that I played with the fights of medium, and I think it's fine. Like, uh, um, I think that uh, this kind of action sequence like are more enjoyable if uh, these are lived only as uh, something that uh, is in the between of you and the next section of the story. Mm, and uh, like, um, I repeat, like you can be the your own. Uh, <laughs> the, the one who chose your own difficulty by activating or deactivating some helps or like playing in a total old school uh, way so for the ones who actually wanted to see something and say oh but what do I have to do with this like you can play the game in that way and like this is gonna add uh, uh, most likely hours or minutes of, the, of uh, the experience in Alone in the Dark this said like my first playthrough was uh, uh, between 6 and 8 hours and they played as Emily. The second playthrough was uh, between uh, four and uh, six hours and then of course you go faster and faster once uh, that uh, you are just uh, speed running basically to discover uh, the extra secrets uh, that you unlocked by uh, getting the collectibles in uh, both the playthroughs. I'm really thankful to THQ for uh, allowing me to try this game uh, during these weeks. Like, uh, it allowed me to go deeper and deeper in the story, to see more of the story, and to actually play the campaign with the, with both the characters. Like, I really enjoyed this. So if you are totally invested in this kind of horror stories, so, so narrative uh, experiences with the, um, as a, an atmosphere that is actually uh, creepy and menacing, uh, uh, but also a big uh, uh, involvement of uh, the psychological aspect of the uh, protagonist inside the characters of the story. Like, this is a game is for you. Like, I repeat, as an Alan Wake fan that was a more psychological horror, I really enjoyed this game. And, uh, like, uh, I literally started playing as Emily. Like, I couldn't stop for the whole day. And even that, after that, I stopped uh, because, like, of course, I saw the credits of the game after finishing with Emily. Like, the first thing I did wasn't taking a break, but, like, starting immediately with the uh, Carby to see what uh, the story had to show to me from his perspective. So, and I kind of... <laughs> I, I know that the word rush that makes it sound like something negative, because, like, usually you rush something that you want to see the ending uh, as soon as possible, but, like, it was a consequence of how invested and involved I was in this story. So, personally, I really appreciated this game, and I really hope to see more of this in the future. Let me know what you think about uh, this game, if you're interested in it, if you already pre-ordered it, if you are playing it right now. Uh, uh, or come back once that you are able of basically playing this game. 
Uh, and I hope that if you choose to give a chance to this game, you're going to be able to appreciate it uh, as me.